gestational diabetes occurs only in women once they become pregnant. It is the result of hormonal changes and the physical and psychological stresses in the mother's body during pregnancy. Increased levels of hormones in the mother, the presence of excessive body weight, plus the increasing size of the growing baby generate insulin resistance, which normal weight women can also develop whether they are pregnant or not. The mother's insulin resistance results in gestational diabetes, which is responsible for causing abnormally high levels of blood glucose during pregnancy. If these elevated diabetic glucose numbers are not promptly returned to stable, normal, or nearly normal values, gestational diabetes often leads to the birth of an abnormally overweight or macrosomic infant. Here are some examples of babies with macrosomia. Their excessive size and weight are unhealthy. Many parents believe that a chubby baby is a sign of good health, but this mistaken belief is totally incorrect. The baby's excessive size is due to the fact that the diabetic mother's insulin never passes through the placenta to the baby, while her abnormally elevated levels of glucose pass right through to provide her baby with lots of extra food to convert into fat and body growth. The mother's frequent or constant diabetic blood sugars during pregnancy produce macrosomic babies who later in life are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, overweight, obesity, and asthma. Stillbirth, the death of the fetus after the 20th week of pregnancy, is four times more likely in women with undiagnosed and untreated gestational diabetes. As with all types of diabetes, there are few or no signs or symptoms to indicate to the mother that her blood sugar levels are dangerously high. For this reason, every woman should measure her blood glucose levels between weeks 18 and 24 of every pregnancy to learn if her results are normal or abnormal. If the amount of glucose in circulation while fasting exceeds 91.8 milligrams per deciliter of blood, the diagnosis is gestational diabetes. Immediately at diagnosis, start treatment with the essential and primary tool for successful, effective management of gestational diabetes, which is a low-sugar, low-starch food plan that stresses proteins, essential fats, and green vegetables, omitting non-essential carbohydrate foods rapidly and safely lowers diabetic blood sugar levels. Moderate physical exercise, such as walking or swimming, is useful during pregnancy because it helps regulate blood sugars and reduces the body's need for insulin. After effectively adjusting the diet, insulin is the safest treatment for diabetic blood sugars and may be used and needed without harming either the mother or the infant. Metformin is considered to be safe for managing gestational diabetes, but other oral anti-diabetic medications should not be taken during pregnancy. The goal of treatment is the same as that for every other type of diabetes. To maintain the mother's blood glucose levels as close as possible to non-diabetic values 24 hours 
every day. Normal glycemia ensures a healthy baby of normal birth weight. Within five to 10 years after having gestational diabetes and giving birth to a child, about 50% of mothers develop type two diabetes. This is true whether their baby was macrosomic or not. In the next video, I'll explain pre-diabetes and how you can know if it is really diabetes or not. The answer may surprise you.